Good morning. How is everyone today? All right, I want you to stand to your feet, if you will. I'm going to read Scripture, Psalms 31, this morning, and then we're going to have church. Who's ready to have church? All right, Psalms 31, it says, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a refuge of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead and guide me. For I hear the slander of many. Fear is on every side while they take counsel together against me. They scheme to take away my life. But as for me, I trust in you, O Lord, and I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you and in the presence of the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence. From the plots of man you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion. From the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown his marvelous kindness in a strong city. So he declares, O oh, love the Lord, all you his saints. For the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all who hope in the Lord. So with that I want every hand lifted up and every eye lifted up to the Lord and say God I receive your strength today. You preserved me. You have helped me. You have guided me in the very presence of my enemies. So therefore I shall give you praise in the name of the Lord. Everybody make a joyful noise to the Lord today. Let's have church this morning.
almost tell the same old lie If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life A better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel love is a chain breaker. Everybody can be seated for just a moment. Before I let the kids go, we want to pray. When we pray for a safe travel, our students and several of the leaders are gone to Winterfest. I know they had services Friday and then last night, and they'll be coming back today. So when we pray, we will pray safe travels for them to come home. But at this moment, I need Miss Jamie Adams, Miss Savannah Silver, Isabella Silver, Monty Christenberry, Heather Christenberry, Brittany York, Nick Dukes, Holly Dukes, and Camber Dukes to all line up across the front of the church. <clears throat> we just came through our Grow Now class, and these have shown interest of becoming a family member of the Fife Church of God. Thank you for giving in the hand. But we'll do that again momentarily. But as these come forward, again, Miss Jamie, Miss Savannah, Miss Isabella, Monty, Heather, Brittany, Nick, Holly, and Camber, I want to say thank you for joining the Fife Church of God. Can we give these a round of applause for who they are <laughs> and what they stand for in the kingdom of God? According to the minutes of the Church of God, I have the distinct honor to welcome them into the family of God. And then when we pray, I'm going to ask you all to pray twofold that God would have you be the member that you need to be 
in helping to grow and helping to nurture these that are coming in. But then you also ask God to move upon them that they would also be the members that God has called them to be. So to each of you, you all realize that by presenting yourself for membership that you are assuming a solemn obligation. And it is, as ex- it is expected that you will always be true to your promise and faithfully fulfill and discharge your obligation as a loyal member. To each of you, I'll come here, so. Do you publicly confess and testify that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and in the full pardon of your sin? Are you saved? Are you willing to walk in light of Scripture as it shines upon your path, allowing it to guide you in all direction of life? Are you willing to abide by and subscribe to the discipline of the church of God as outlined by Scripture and set forth in the minutes of the International General Assembly? Are you willing to support the church with your attendance and your temporal means to the best of your ability as the Lord prospers you? Do you agree to be subject to those counsel and admonition of those who are over you in the Lord? Is there any member that has a legal objection to any of these becoming members of the church of God? By the authority vested in me as a minister of the church of God, I take great pleasure in welcoming you into this membership this morning. And I would like to pray again. I have confidence that you will ever be a faithful member and a blessing to the church and that the church will be a blessing to you. And I want us to pray for this fellowship. For all of you, I would like for you to place your hand over your heart and reach your hand forward as we pray over these individuals. Father, we love you and we're so grateful for these that have come forward to be a member of the Five Church of God. God, I know this is honoring you as they choose to be a member of the Five Church of God family. But more importantly, they're members of the kingdom of God. May you touch their families, their households. And God, you would lead them and guide them into all truth that you would bless them. But God, we as current members would be that that they need as a church body and as a family. That we would help in times of hurt that we would reach out in times of need, that, God, we would be joined together as a body of believers. Your will being accomplished in their households and in ours, that together we would grow the kingdom of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody says amen. Would you please give another round of applause for these that have chose to join the Five Church of God. You can be seated. Thank you all for being here today. So I also have the pleasure of releasing all of these children to go to Children's Church. If you will, kids, hop up, if you will, and you all may be excused, and you'll be escorted next door to Children's Church. Wave goodbye to all of these old people out here. Tell them you'll see them in a bit. with announcements first Monday prayer I'm going to say a little bit more about that during my sermon that is tomorrow night if you can at 6 p.m. be here for our first Monday prayer the women's retreat they're leaving next week and I have been asked for us men to go out to eat now if you would like to we didn't get to make James's barbecue for ribeye during our other event So I'm just going to go ahead and say at 5 p.m. Friday night, any man, if your woman's gone and you don't want to cook, you can join us at James's Barbecue. And Roger Manis and I, we're going to go over there and have a ribeye. You're going to buy your own. It's going to be $18.95. But if you want to join us at James's on Friday, man, if you don't want to cook, that's where we're going to be. Is that good for you, Roger? All right.
Junior Talent, March 15th and 16th. Pastor Appreciation, the 17th. Kids Passover Meal at 6 p.m. on the 20th of March. Spring Break is 25th through the 29th. There will not be Wednesday night service that night. And then Good Friday, March the 29th, we're going to have a special service by popular demand. We're going to wash feet. We're going to have communion. Good Friday here in the main auditorium. And then Easter Sunday's the 31st and the choir practice each afternoon. You know what they are. Who's ready to give in their offering? Praise God. It is a time of celebration. It is a time of worship. It is not to be taken away from. This is a moment God has prospered you. You can give online at fivelife.com or you can pay in-house right here. But I want to pray God to bless you and let's pray for our students to have a safe trip home. Father in heaven, we're so grateful for all that you do, say, and are in our lives. We ask God that your will be accomplished in this place today, that we would honor you in our giving and that we would honor you in our tithe and our offering. Now, Lord, may you bless our worship and you bless our time together. God, your will be done. Bless our students and the leaders as they drive back. Safe travels in Jesus' name. Amen.
Everybody lift up their hands right now and say, He's holy. You're holy. Holy forever. The angels cry. Holy. You're lifted high. Holy. Holy forever. just praise the Lord. Worship team, thank you. Thank you for leading us into the presence of the Lord. Before you sit down, I want you to turn around to somebody. I want you to hug their neck real good. Three good people. If you're right here close in this area, tell my mother happy birthday. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday, mama. You're the one that brought me into the world. Hug somebody's neck. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're proud to see them at the Five Church of God. And you know, in light of that song, also I want you to say, holiness looks good on you. Holiness looks good on you. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 through 19. And then when we pray, it has just been brought to my attention. As we were worshiping, Sister Ann Richards at this moment is in the emergency room. They think she has appendicitis, but she has asked this church to pray for her. She texts one of the members, and when we pray, let's ask God to move upon Sister Ann Richards. And I know there's many needs. I don't want to just limit them. So if you have a need at that time, we'll make it known by the lifting of hands. Well, let's read Scripture, then go to the Lord in prayer. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven 
and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things He may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell. This is Jesus that Paul is writing about. When we pray, let's pray for Ann Richards. And if you have a need, would you make it known by the uplifting of your hand? Right there. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. God sees the need. If you see somebody with their hand lifted up, would you just lay your hand right next to them? It may be physical. It may be spiritual. Who knows? God knows. Father in heaven, right now, we do thank you for your presence in this place. And we ask, God, that your will be accomplished in and through our hearts. We lift up Ann Richards to you right now in the name of Jesus. That, God, you would move upon her body. That, God, you would move upon her now a great touch of your hand and healing hand upon her. And, God, all over this house, hands were lifted up. How you see the need and you know the urgency, God, as we believe together in faith that you and you only will touch, will intercede and intervene on the behalf of these needs. Now, God, I need your touch. As the shepherd of this church, Lord, I fall under your care, the great shepherd. You only be seen, Lord, today. But God, this word is so real and so needed and so pertinent for today. And I ask God that you would help me to speak with such clarity. God, that you would clean out ears and you would clean out minds. And that you would restore hearts today. In the mighty name of Jesus' name, I pray. Everybody says amen. You may be seated. Thank you for being at the Fife Church of God. I want to preface my message this morning with a testimony. By nature, most of you probably already know this, I am a pretty reserved kind of guy. You don't know what I'm going through. My wife even knows that to be true. I hold a lot of stuff in. That's just who I am by nature. I don't share a lot of emotion. But during the month of February, my wife and I went through spiritual warfare. And I know we all go through it. And the reason that I'm sharing this with you, I know that if I go through spiritual warfare as your shepherd, that you also are going through spiritual warfare. Can I get an amen from anybody? It started with some bad reports. My daughter was received a bad report, and I'm not going to go into detail, but when we get a bad report, I'm not so much the worry ward. I leave that to my wife, who I dearly love. But she gets in an uproar and automatically assumes the worst. There's probably nobody else like that in the room. Amen. So that's not a bad thing, but that set her on to a motion of praying and seeking God. And then we'd get a bad report about Sawyer. And then we'd get one about Luke. And then we would get one about Ivy. And in all of this stuff, and I'm not just pinpointing one after the other, and I'm not going to go into great detail with everything, but we had been under spiritual attack to the very point that it started even taking its toll on our marriage. Now again, nobody else may have that same kind of struggles or same kind of troubles, but when you got marriage struggles, Sometimes it gets pretty hard in the house. It gets pretty tough in a relationship. 
And then things begin to pull and Satan who loves to steal, who loves to kill, who loves to destroy. He wants to devour and mar and manipulate and make things up and do all that he can. And I come to the realization again that if that's happening in my home, I guarantee you it's happening in a lot of other homes because he would love nothing more than to sabotage the family. And then last week as I preached, and I always go to the Word when I have issues, and I, and I always go to the Lord, and I'm not trying to be super spiritual, but last week, I had, and I told this to Adam, I had rather been anywhere doing anything else than preaching. And I'm the pastor of the church. And I'm just being honest with you. I was hurting. I was confused. I had all of this muck. I had all of this stuff. And, and Teresa and I had gotten in an argument the night before. Again, I live in the world just like you do. All of this comes to, and again, I may be telling too much, and then I may not be telling enough. But I looked at him and I said, had you rather just be anywhere doing anything at this moment and it happens to us all. Can I just, for my sake, can I get a hand raise of those that agree? That's how I felt. But yet, because of the calling of God upon my life, I still had to do what God has called me to do. And guess what God would give me for the message for last week? The temptation of Christ. How Satan himself came against Jesus himself tempted him while 40 days into the wilderness and I'm sitting here and as I'm reading that and I'm studying that, weeping and crying like a baby, knowing the turmoil that I'm going through, I'm preaching to a congregation of the temptations of Christ. Not knowing that that same week my wife would reach out to two of the ones that she always reaches out to for prayer. And that we become the topic of a prayer meeting on that Monday night. And God began to move and God began to minister and God began to relate it. And God began to pour out and God began to do what only God can do. And this sermon is also a result of the hard times that we were going through because this is what I needed to be reminded of just how much Jesus loves me and how much He loves you. So if I were to stand here and say that I've always got it all together and, and I've always got it, you see the new jacket and you, and you see the polished shoes, but, but I struggle just like you do. And I face temptations and I face wiles of the devil just like you do. No one is immune from the hardships of life. Blow after blow and story after story and report after report. We were getting to the place. When is this battle going to end? And then in watching a movie last night, I realized... Hardships are a part of life, but they keep us close to Christ. Because Christ most of all faced hardships. And He even told us, those who endure to the end shall be saved. So with all of that today, I want to preach to you the fullness of Christ. This is a most precious truth that we have a Savior who is no respect, deficient in wisdom, power, and grace to redeem us and to save us. There is nothing necessary to be done in our salvation which He is not qualified to do. There is nothing which we need to enable us to perform our duties to meet temptation and even to bear trial, which He is not able to give. In no situation of trouble or even danger, 
Will the church find that there is deficiency in the one we call the Christ? There is no concern to which the church can put her hands Will there be lack of power and her great head to enable her to accomplish what he has called the church to do? We may go to him in all of our troubles, in all of our weaknesses, in our temptation, and even in our wants. And we will be supplied from his fullness just as if we were thirsty we go to an ocean of pure water and drink God is more than enough in the first chapter of this letter to the Colossian church Paul describes the fullness of Christ his redemptive work his bodily features his creative work and his pre-existence and power and that is what i'm going to talk about with you this morning what i needed after a rough couple of weeks first of all his redemptive work the redemptive work of christ refers to the work of the lord jesus christ in redeeming humanity from sin from death and from the wrath of God. And what I mean by that is he paid the price for all of mankind to be saved. He redeemed us. His redemptive work is not limited to evangelism, but it also encompasses everything necessary to make the world what God intended it to be. And through the sacrificial death of Jesus, Jesus purchased believers from the slavery of sin and set us free from that bondage. And with the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, sin has been redeemed. When we read in Hebrews chapter 1 verses 2 and 3, God in these last days has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, through whom He made the world's known who bring being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down at the right hand of majesty on high in verse 10 he says and you O Lord in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth the heavens and the works of your hands they will perish but you remain they will grow old like a garment like a cloak you will fold them up and they will be changed but you are the same and your years will not fail it is because of Christ Jesus that any of us all of us are saved but Paul doesn't stop there he talks about his bodily features he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation he He's the second person in the Trinity. He being eternally in the Father and the Father in Him. He is in respect of His Father, His essential image. In regard to us as invisible as the Father Himself, He is the Son of the one true God, the living God. He was and still is. Jesus Himself would say, I am the bread of life, meaning He's fulfilling. He himself would say I am the light of the world meaning that I will guide you into all truth in John 10 and 9 he would declare I am the door brother Johnny that means he is a God of opportunity he would also declare that I'm the good shepherd he cares I am the vine causing growth where I am there you may be also what Jesus does to all of mankind he invites us to be a part of the family of God he is God man in whom the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily whereby he exceeds and surpasses angels he exceeds and surpasses men my God is enough through the man of the Lord Jesus Christ Hebrews 1 and 3 who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power he had by by himself purged our sins sat down to the right hand of majesty on high somebody needs to celebrate who Jesus is he is enough somebody worship with me
Let's talk about his creative work. Understanding that his redemptive work is real. He is true. His bodily features, he is the same. And he is God. That his creative work, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and are on earth. Visible and invisible, where the thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. All things that are in the worlds above us were the work of his creative power. All that are in the earth, all the animals, all the plants, all the minerals, all the waters, hidden, hidden things, etc. Everything, everything which the earth contains was made by Christ. Visible and invisible. We see but such a very small part of a grand universe. We cannot see the angels, the inhabitants of distant worlds. We can't see. There are multitudes of worlds which even with the best instruments we cannot see. Yet all of these things are said to have been created by Christ, the one who saved you. For His glory, for such purposes as He has designed. Now when we see this, John 1 and 3 is proof of that truth. All things were made through Him and without Him nothing was made that was made. He's greater than your circumstance. He's greater than your problem. He's greater than anything you're going through. He's greater than my marriage. He's greater than my struggles. He's greater than bad reports. He is greater than anything. He's greater than what Ann Richards is going through right now at this very moment. Though our bodies are aching and though we pray, my God is greater through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and we ought to understand His redemptive plan. He is greater. His mission was, I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. His mission was, the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. His mission was, in Luke 4 and 43, He said, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. For this purpose I have been sent. His mission was to send fire upon the earth. His mission, He said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Abundantly, John 12 and 47, another word of Christ. I did not come to judge the world, but to save it. John 18 and 37, for this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. He has all authority, and He has all ability. And when I tell you that He can understand, He came here to save. He came here to love. He came here to direct my my God can through the man of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'm not going to stop there. He pre-existence and his power. He is before all things and in him all things consist. The meaning of that is they are kept in their present state. Their existence, their order, their arrangements are continued by his power. If unsupported by him everything in the world would fall in disorder or sink back to nothing you are because he says you are this world is because he says it is everything that we know everything that we experience is because God said so and the moment God pulls his hand off of it there's disorder there's disunity if it's unsupported it will fall back to nothing so what we need to do is praise God that he is in control it may seem like evil is rampant but I'm here to tell you my God still is in control of it all we still has the world in the palm of his hand he is still worthy of our worship he's still worthy of our praise my God is still in control John 1 1 and 2 in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God he was in the beginning with God everything is because he is Everything. He's the only conqueror of the grave. Other resurrections were temporary blessings. 
But the curse of death reigned sure. Jesus was the only one that raised from the dead never to die again. Christ is the only one to orchestrate his own resurrection. Destroy this temple and in three days I myself am going to raise it up. The only begotten of the Son. We are the sons of God by adoption. He is the Son of God from eternity. I thank God for my adopted family in the Lord Jesus Christ. But He was the Son of God from ages to come and ages to be. He always was and He always will be. He's the only creator and the sustainer of the heavens and the earth. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. And He upholds everything by the one word of His power. By Him and for Him, everything, all things were created. Everything in heaven, those that are in the earth, visible, invisible, whether it be thrones, whether it be dominions, principalities, power, things created by Him, for Him, and He is before all things, and in Him all things consist. Have I made it very clear yet that Jesus Christ has full control? He's the only eternal high priest. All other high priests had their priesthood terminated at their death. But He ever lives to make intercession for you and I. He didn't stop at the resurrection. He didn't stop with the disciples, but he went away to prepare a place for us and that he could guide us and lead us into all ways of truth. He is the only perfect, sinless man. All others were flawed. There is none higher. There is none greater. Acts 17 and 28, we read, For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Now here's where I want to get for just a minute. As an offspring of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're saved, you're his child, you're his offspring. Acts 17, 28, let me read it again. For in him we live and move and have our being. As also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. You're his child. Mark 16 and 17 says, these signs will follow those who believe. These signs will follow his offspring. In my name they shall cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. We should not be powerless over sin. We should not be powerless over sickness. Now, my wife sometimes gives me a good shot in the arm. And I never read my sermons to her. But she's a pretty good influence in my mind. And she tells me, do you know what we need these days? Number one, we need to see people saved. I hear a lot of talk and a lot of disappointment about people falling away. I get that. But what if we were to put the emphasis on the good that God is doing? God's changing lives. We just took in a lot of people for membership of the church. We have, I know, five people right now that want to be baptized in this church. There are lives changed. They were filled with the Holy Ghost at Winterfest and all of these things taking place. We've got to train our brain to begin to focus on the positive. And what we need is sometimes to just let our hair down and allow the Holy Ghost to be the Holy Ghost in our life. I'm tired of people saying, well, I just can't because of this or I just can't because of that. I have proven to you that if Jesus... Jesus Christ is first and foremost in your life. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. And as his follower, what the Bible tells me, these signs will follow. You lay hands on the sick, they're going to recover. You can take up serpents, although I don't advise it, but that means that God gives you dominion over every evil thing that's taking place in your life. He said that we will cast out demons. Now that may not be for today, but I'm here to tell you if demonology 
technology was real in the days of Christ, you better believe people are still being controlled by demons and there's still a day that the church needs to rise up and cast it out. That is no part in you. We need to start having the boldness that the Holy Spirit has called for us to be and we shall speak with new tongues. We shall overcome the devil. It is high time for the church to say, I am a follower of Christ and as his child, I will do what the following says is going to happen to me. Somebody needs to praise God over that. We should not be powerless over sin. And we should not be powerless over sickness. We should not be powerless over poison. When people come against you with poisonous ideas, you need to shut it down. When people come at you with gossip, what you need to do is allow the Holy Spirit to rise up in you and shut it down. When people come to you with poisonous actions, what you need to do is begin to shut it down. And you can shut it down with love. I'm speaking to the church. I'm speaking to the bride of Christ. I'm speaking from hurt. I'm speaking a word that God has spoken to me when I was in my darkest state at the moment. God says it's time for you to be what I've called you to be. And that's what I mean when I know that the enemy came against me and all of these things are happening. It was a prayer meeting that broke through. It wasn't my prayer. It wasn't just Teresa's prayer. But it was a gathering together. And it was a reach out of hope to say, I need someone standing in the gap for me. And I'm believing that my daughter be touched in the name of the Lord. I'm believing that my sons, I'm believing that my grandchildren, I'm believing that your children, that your needs. I'm believing for Ann Richards. I'm believing in a mighty move. God is a miracle working God. And I believe that God can do anything that that word says he will do. And according to scripture, these signs will follow. We shall be, Brother Michael, that people that are healing sick and that are touching lives. Somebody needs to give the Lord some praise. You better watch out preaching like that. You either believe it or you don't. Scripture says this is what we have. Scripture says this is what we are. But in our minds, well, that was for a different day. Hogwash, no. It's still just as prevalent today by saying it was for then. It's saying that God can't do it now. He's still got all power. He's still got all authority. My God still can. If you're still his bride, he's still blessing. He's still helping. And he's still empowering. Give the Lord some praise. You shouldn't be powerless over demons. You shouldn't be powerless over your own tongue. Oh, I just, I just said it. I didn't mean what I said. You can't get it back once you say it. You should not be powerless over your own tongue. Look at your neighbor and say, he's probably talking to you. <laughs> These things shall not be according to how I read Scripture and according to what we have in Christ, according to what Christ has done for us. I'm looking back and reflecting on why such terrible things were happening. I'm telling you why. I got a pastor stirred up. Got a pastor's wife stirred up. 
that got a prayer team stirred up, that got a prayer moment stirred up, that started doing things in the spiritual realm, and God started giving me downloads, and God started moving upon things within the time frame and within the frame of, of the plan of what the church is doing. God said, I've got this perfectly in order. You keep loving your wife. You keep blessing her. You keep watching what I'm going to do and preach my word. He said, these things will follow I'm ready for these things move of God because we're not playing church anymore. Lives are got to be changed. People's got to be healed. Lives have got to be touched. People come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the last days I will pour out my spirit. Your sons and daughters prophesy. Men and women dream dreams upon my men's service and my maid service. I will pour out of my spirit. We're living in that time. God's wanting to do a last days move and I believe that he's going to use the church for it but he's going to find somebody adorned and ready and these signs are going to follow can I get somebody that understands that and say I want to be a signs and follower kind of guy kind of girl we should not be powerless would you just do me a favor nudge your neighbor real good we should not be powerless These things shall not. We have Jesus. Jesus was tempted and did not sin. I preached it last week, but all Jesus did, he didn't try to argue with the devil. He didn't try to convince the devil of his wrong. He reminded him of the word of God. Satan used the word of God to come against Jesus. When he wanted him to become popular. And Jesus said. Man. Shall live by. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Three times when Satan came against him. Every time Jesus took the stand upon the word of God. And his relationship with his father. And he even told him. Get behind me Satan. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord. Thy God. He knew who he was. As his offspring, you're a child of God. Guess who's with you? That same God that is Jesus. That same God that was with Jesus is the same God through the Holy Spirit that is living in you and upon you. But the world will cause doubt. Well, well, they used to do this. Well, they used to do that. Well, the Word of God, there's not a use to in the Word of God. The Word of God said, this shall follow. Those who believe in my name, they will cast out demons. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. In my name, they will take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. That's a promise to me. That's a promise to you. My God is still the same God, Jesus Christ, at the right Right hand of the Father, send His Holy Spirit that lives in you, that lives in me. If He does it, you can change that today. And that promise is still just as true today. These signs shall follow. Colossians 1. My text. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. And conveyed unto us into the kingdom of his son, of his love. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the invisible, the image of the invisible God. Firstborn over all creation. For him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, dominions, principalities, powers. All things were created through him and for him. He's before all things. In Him all things consist. Worship team, would you come? He is the head of the church who is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, that in all things He may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness should dwell. I hope you're understanding the gist of what I'm preaching today. I prove to you all that Christ 
was and is. You are his offspring. You are his redemptive work. His bodily features should now be your bodily features. His mindset should now be your mindset. This sermon can be summarized by this one verse of Scripture. Would you put John 1.14 up there and leave it there? The Word became flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. Macy, God knew what I needed at my darkest moment of time. When I felt worthless and I felt like I'd rather be anywhere but here, God revealed to me, Brother Larry, that, hey, I was tempted too, but here's what I did. And then the next week, I opened up my Bible and I start reading Colossians and I'm thinking, oh, God, only you can do this. Who Brother Bo wrapped his arms around me while I'm at my desk. And he just gave me one of them big old God hugs and says, I got this. You're one of mine. I died for you. I paid the redemptive price for your sins. Just cast all your cares upon me. Watch what I'll do. Sister Sherry, better yet, not only am I going to do it in you, but if you'll just trust me, there's stuff going to follow you as you go through this thing called life, and people's going to see me in you. Because you saw the glory as of the only begotten. These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. In my name, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. You know what he's saying? In a nutshell. I got it. I'm in control. Quit worrying. Quit fretting. Quit contemplating about what's going on. And just trust in me and my redemptive plan. Because I'm bringing all of this stuff to pass. Because you are going to be perfected one day. But until then, strive for excellence. And watch the work that I do behind. Everybody stand. The fullness of Christ is here. He cares deeply for you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I know we prayed for needs earlier. But this morning I want to go a step further. You may not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Signs and wonders may not be following you. You may feel like I felt last week and your head's just barely above water. This morning, I want to ask everybody that would to move out, come to these altars and pray that signs and wonders would follow. And as people begin to move, if you do not know Jesus Christ, let me tell you how easy it is. Lord, I'm lost and I need direction. 
thank you for your thank you for your redemptive plan. I understand that you paid the price for my sins. I want to be saved and live for you. And according to faith and scripture, when you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, scripture says you are saved. At that moment, signs and wonders can begin to follow you because of the redemptive plan of Christ. And some of you be moving, and all you're going to be moving for is, I just want more of you, Lord. I want to walk worthy of the Word of God that says, signs and wonders shall follow. I want to speak with new tongues. I want to cast out devils. I want the authority that you've been given to live in me, that I'll cast out doubt. Would you move? As they begin to sing all over the house, would you move? Would you move? Would you move? And as they're moving, you come forward. Ask Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life. Experience the fullness of Christ. I want to speak with new tongues. I'm going to cast out the evil that has followed over my family. Holy. among us and we beheld his glory
as we dismiss with prayer, I want you to speak to those bad reports. I want you to begin to speak to those ailments. I want you to go ahead and declare, God, I believe everything that this book says and that I have experienced the fullness of Christ. Signs are going to start following you and wonders. Call me a freak if you want to. I don't care, but I'm just speaking what the Word of God says. The fullness of Christ is real. And in these last days, I don't believe we need to pitter-pat around it. If God be for us, who can be against us? Spiritual warfare is real. But you've been given power. You've been given dominion over those things. And it's time that we start casting some things out. Go ahead and give the Lord some praise. It's time for us to start speaking some things that are not as though they are. Am I making sense to anybody? I'm going to start praying daily for a boldness to come upon the five church of God. That we're not looking at what we used to be, but people start talking about what we are right now. There's a church over there at five that'll get you prayed through. There's some believers over there on that prayer team that'll call upon the name of the Lord. And they will be saved. It's already been given in dreams. Can I go ahead and tell you one? If this will be all right, we had one of our own had a dream that ambulances, not one, but multiple ambulances, were no longer taking patients to the hospital, but they were bringing them here. Now, that may never literally happen. But let me tell you to me what that symbolizes. That people that are sick, that people that are hurting don't know what to do. They've been given report after report after report. They got no hope. They got to turn somewhere. And here's a bunch of country folk in the middle of North Alabama that just love the Lord. Ricky, guess what? They're going to have an encounter with God. First thing going to happen, they're going to get saved. God's going to change them. But then he ain't going to leave them like they are. said, I've got one better. I'm going to heal you. And I'm going to deliver you. But you go tell others about it. Glory! Glory! But, but, wait a minute, don't get cranked up yet. It's not going to happen on accident. You know the story of Jesus, how his disciples couldn't pray over sickness. Jesus looked at them, disputed them for their unbelief. And he told his own disciples, this kind only comes by prayer and by fasting. It ain't going to happen if you ain't living a godly life. You can't just label yourself Christian and expect to cast out devils because they'll slam you up against the wall and make you look a fool. Look at the seven sons of Sceva, it happened. We adjure you in the name of Jesus. Whoop them boys upside down the other. But Jesus goes in the power of the Father. With authority. He was living right. And he spoke to legions of demons. And told them to go into a herd of swine. This kind only comes but by prayer and fasting. 
You can know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and quote Scripture better than anybody in the room. But if you don't have Jesus, Satan will still come against you with the Word of God and manipulate it. I'm not going to dismiss this with prayer today. But I do want to urge you to be here for our first Monday prayer tomorrow. Prayer changes things. It may not be exactly what you like. It may not be exactly what you want. I don't care if you get in this far right corner and bow on your knees and stay in a posture on your hands and face for the whole hour. I don't care what you do. But there is something about join prayer. You know who you can count on. When you begin to pray, God begins to move. And you join that with fasting. Those little feelings, those little irritations, those little things that the enemy's coming against you, those little things that you don't like, getting on your nerves, even in your church. You ain't here for all of that. You're here for signs and wonders. You're here for the fullness of Christ. You're here because God wants you to be here and you're getting filled so that signs and wonders begin following you outside these doors. And Jesus said, y'all get me started again. If I be lifted up, I will draw all manner of man unto myself. Those people that didn't like you before are going to start wanting to hang around you. You're just standing there. Because now you're lifting up Christ. They don't have to like you. But they got to love Jesus. And when Jesus is the only one being shown, being seen, being exemplified, guess what? You're going to become a magnet. Because signs and wonders are following you. You become that hospital. You become that prayer line. You become that faith. You become that authority. You become that power. You become that lifeline to others so that they also become saved and signs and wonders start to follow them. Folks, we're living in the last days. Give Him some praise. Holy forever. One more time. Worship, 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 worship. All the angels cry. Yeah, there you go. Worship, worship, worship. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above yes. all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name stands above them all. And the angels cry. Holy. Holy. you to hug at least 10 people. Tell them you love them. Speak blessing over them and encourage them. Signs and wonders will follow you all the days of your life. In His name, you'll cast out devils. In His name, you'll take up serpents. In His name, if any deadly thing come over you, it shall by no means harm you. Glory be to the Lamb of God. We give you praise. Oh.